good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this uh, session concerning the European Alliance uh, for Apprenticeships. This session is for organizations that want to know what it is and maybe want to join it, or, al or also for organizations that are members already of the Alliance and want to know a little bit more how to take the best advantage of it. I will start with some uh, information for you. First of all, this is uh, the European Alliance for Apprenticeships uh, is an initiative by the European Commission, by DG employment to which uh, of which I, I make part myself uh, and the unit in charge of vocational education and training. I'm here today with my colleague Larissa Panait who will uh, give you more information about the details of the European Alliance for Apprenticeship and another colleague Luca Mobilio, Associate Director at Ecoris, is the project manager on the site on the side of our contractor ECORIS, who is in charge of the development of the European Alliance for Apprenticeship and the support to the members of this initiative. We also have with us another speaker, Petru Vasi, whose organization from Romania just joined the European Alliance for Apprenticeships uh, a week ago. So he would like to share with you the reasons why he has joined this initiative, what he looks forward to, um, to learn from uh, this initiative and which benefits uh, he expects. And then he will also present uh, a bit the work that his organization is doing in the field of apprenticeships. On my side, just to introduce the topic, is a little bit going back into history because uh, this European Alliance for Apprenticeships that we will present to you exists since 10 years. We just celebrated last week uh, the 10th birthday of this alliance with a high level event here in Brussels and um, I would like to get you back to 2013 when uh, this initiative wa was launched. You can remember that we were coming out and living in the um, uh, aftermath of the economic crisis of 2008. In 2013, we had a high, highest, I would say, record unemployment rate of 12% as an average in the European Union. And in some countries, unemployment rate, particularly for young people, was as high as 50%. So starting from this, this is actually the reason why 10 years ago, year ago the European Alliance for Apprenticeships was born. It was because we believed then and we still believe now that apprenticeships are an important tool to ensure for young people, but not only young people, a smooth transition into the labor market. And coming now to 2023, we see that this European Alliance for Apprenticeships is still very relevant because nowadays we might be in a different situation concerning unemployment because now unemployment rate is very, very low. But we have other challenges that companies are facing. Indeed, companies are saying that they cannot recruit the people that they need. They have unfilled vacancies. They don't find skilled uh, labor force. And also for this challenge, this current challenge, we think that apprenticeships are very relevant because companies can uh, in get involved in apprenticeships and the apprentices that they help us to train now will be the skilled workers that they can have in their companies uh, in the future. Um, after this first introduction, now the word, uh, let's say the word is for you. We have a little uh, poll for you to, to present so that you can let us know where you are coming from, what you expect from the from this uh, event and what you expect or what are your ideas about the European uh, Alliance for Apprenticeships. And then uh, after we have collected this information from you, we will uh, 
We will uh, discuss it further in the meeting with the speakers and at the end of the meeting you will have time for asking additional questions, but you can put your questions in the chat or wait for the end when we have a question and answer session. So now in this, uh, what you see on your screen, you can enter your uh, reply and uh, let us know from which country you are uh, coming from. You put your reply and then you click uh, on the button and it on the I think the button on the side and then you can do it. Ed, colleagues, can you give more instructions in case how this can be used the chat? Um, yeah, you should be able to participants should be able to click on the poll and scroll through the questions um, to enter your responses. So if you could uh, confirm that that is indeed the case. Um, please, uh, your responses would be much appreciated. Thank you. OK, so you can go through and then uh, we will show the replies afterwards, uh, Imogen. The idea was to download the results after, um, but we can see if we can uh, display the results. Yeah. Maybe for the first one on the countries, if you if you can, we give still a little time to the participant uh, to scroll through the questions, reply, and then maybe we can, uh, if possible, we can share the countries. And then we continue with the, we start with the agenda of the meeting and the presentation. But uh, for the moment, please uh, take the time to reply to the questions and you can scroll with the arrows on the bottom of the poll for passing from one to the other. Do you want me maybe that in the meantime that people uh, reply, we we show the agenda and then uh, you go to the countries? Yeah, OK. Thank you very much. So here you see the agenda of the meeting. The introduction was what I've done so far. Then my colleague Larissa Panait will take you through the um, explanations of what the European Alliance for Apprenticeships uh, is, what are the objectives, uh, what are the benefits, which is uh, something that we very much want to underline. On my side, I would like just to conclude my intervention by saying that we really hope that uh, uh, you can take advantage of the initiatives at European level that we are organizing because we believe that there is a lot for yourself, for organizations at the grassroots level, opportunities to be involved in initiative at European level, which allow you to know what happens in the field of vocational education and training in Europe and particularly in, on apprenticeships and also to be aware of funding opportunities, networking opportunities, etc. And then when you have been seeing this agenda on the screen, I will leave it to my colleagues uh, to take you through the different uh, part. Now, I think if we can show just the countries, the replies on the countries, and then I leave the floor to my colleague Larissa Panait. Otherwise, if it's not possible to show the countries now, we do it afterwards. Um, I would uh, wait um, a bit longer because people are still replying to the poll so that we have okay. all the results to show. Thanks. Yes, that's perfect. Then we start with uh, my colleague Larissa Panait. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. And later on, uh, we will have time for questions and answers, as I've said, or you can put your questions in the chat. Thank you, Larissa. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. I'm Larissa, and uh, I will talk a bit about uh, what the um, Alliance is about. So let's see. Uh, the European Alliance for Apprenticeships, F, in short, you will hear a lot uh, this short name, is a multi-stakeholder platform for sharing experiences, but also learning from the best practices. As Anna mentioned before, it was launched in 2013, and since its launch in 2013, 39 countries have made national commitments under the Alliance. 
guidelines. These, of course, include the 27 EU member states, all candidate countries, all the EFTA countries, the European Free Trade Association, and also as well as Moldova and Israel. Also, over 400 pledges have been made by businesses, chambers, bed providers, and also other organizations. Since 2013, the members pledged to over 1 million apprenticeship placements. So I think uh, this is a great uh, achievement uh, in the past uh, 10 years that the members uh, have done. Also, the role of the Alliance will be, and it is also now really relevant in the upcoming uh, years, we still need to uh, create awareness among uh, organizations and young people on the benefits of apprenticeship placements programs, but also work together, of course, towards better apprenticeship uh, systems and programs that lead to quality jobs. And this is why you also see here that AFA aims to strengthen the quality, supply, and also image of apprenticeships in Europe. Uh, it aims to promote the mobility of apprentices and also aims to provide tailored support to stakeholders involved in delivering apprenticeships. Uh, now let's see exactly also which ones are the priorities of the Alliance. And in July 2020, the Commissioner Nicola Schmidt launched the renewed European Alliance for Apprenticeships, giving new uh, impetus, let's say, to the EU commitment towards apprenticeships and setting out these six ambitious priorities. And here we can see that uh, they are about committing to quality and effective apprenticeships and, of course, encouraging member states and companies to do likewise uh, by fostering national apprenticeships coalitions. Uh, we also have one priority uh, towards SMEs, the small and medium enterprises. And here we talk about incentivizing support to SMEs in providing a stable supply of quality and effective apprenticeships. Uh, we also talk about mobilizing local and also regional authorities as catalysts for apprenticeships within the local business environment. I think this is also really, really relevant. And you'll also see that uh, we will also have uh, some communities related to this uh, regional and cities, but you'll see a bit later. Also, we talk about strengthening social dialogue through a more ac active involvement of national social partner organizations, and these are under the social dialogue priority. And then we also talk about sectoral social dialogue, and uh, we focus on proactively engaging European sectoral social dialogue committees in apprenticeship with a view to agree on joint sectoral pledges. And of course, the last one, but not least, apprentices representation, uh, where we talk about the support, the uh, supporting the representation of apprentices apprentices in member states, and here we, we give the focus on the European Apprentices Network, or EAN in short. Um, also, uh, I will go forward to the membership. Let's see if uh, the slides work. Yes, perfect. Uh, as I said before, the AFA counts more than 400 members, but the large, they say the largest group is made of businesses and vet providers. And of course, we also talk again about the 39 countries uh, which have made the national commitments, which I also um, mentioned before. Um, but I think it's also really important to see who can join AFA, and I, I suppose this is why many of you are here in this meeting. So let's see um, also who can join uh, the Alliance. Uh, well, AFA welcomes pledges by uh, stakeholders, of course, across Europe, willing to contribute to strengthening the supply, quality and or attractiveness of apprenticeships, as well as uh, also the mobility of apprentices. Uh, so whoever wants to contribute to this uh, four aims, uh, they are more than welcome. And apart uh, the countries that, uh, of course, you've seen before also on the slides and I've talked to you about, in addition to these national governments, members of AFA also include companies and business organizations, chambers of industry, commerce and crafts, um, education and training uh, providers, youth and non-profit organization, regional and local authorities, um, professional bodies and network, uh, social partners, uh, research institutes and think tanks. So you see we have uh, plenty of uh, type, uh, types of organizations that can uh, and are already members and can be. So if your organization is part of one of these, and as I said before, if you are willing to contribute to to the aims of AFA, you are more than welcome to, to join the, the Alliance. I will go further now, but of course, if there are also questions in the meantime, you can put them in the chat or we can also take them uh, in the end, at the end. Now let's see exactly also what are your benefits if you want to, to join AFA or what are the ben benefits that you already have as a member of uh, AFA. And I will also talk about the support that we provide. We focus here because I also mentioned before that AFA is a platform uh, for sharing experiences and learning from best practices, right? So within AFA, we focus on 
a lot on networking opportunities, on promoting events, and of course, giving the opportunity for members to be part of these events, uh, offering context to develop new ideas and activities. And of course, all the members, they have access to the latest news and tools on apprenticeships. And again, I will uh, give you a quick um, uh, preview, let's say, at the end and talk about some of the latest news that we have uh, within the AFA. Um, we more concrete to also give uh, some proper examples. So we focus on knowledge sharing, networking and community building as the most important benefits, let's say, that our members have. So here uh, within the knowledge sharing, we talk about webinars, fact sheets, toolkit and also online library that you have access. Uh, about networking, we talk about the events, uh, LinkedIn group, newsletter and mailing list. And for the community building, we also have the thematic communities. But even though that you will join now, let's say, and you heard that the AFI is already uh, 10 years young, not old, I would say, um, you'll also have access to the past resources that uh, were creating, uh, created um, during the years of the Alliance. So again, you'll have access to the past webinars, live discussions, online training that uh, was provided, or also podcasts and so many uh, other resources. And to, to give you exactly strict and not strict, but concrete examples, uh, I will go through each benefit, let's say. So first we talk about the knowledge sharing activities. Uh, and here we talk about the online resource library. I think this is really an important tool uh, because uh, imagine that you, you want or you need some information and instead of going on the internet just to research uh, about different topics that you need, you go to this online resource library. You go, you can also use filters, uh, let's say on different topics or maybe on publications or um, policy reports, let's say, or even research papers. And you go to this library and you can search there and you can find all the information that you need. And you also know that it will be sure and uh, it's also let's say checked that uh, it's also concrete information and also let's say safe. Then we also talk about toolkits and now we are preparing one uh, a toolkit on apprentice mobility. Uh, you'll hear more about uh, this uh, later on. Um, but this apprentice mobility toolkit um, also focuses or we will also look at different uh, definitions or what we understand by apprentice mobility, also a bit of guidance and also some concrete examples. So if you'll join uh, AFA and if you're already a member of AFA later on, you'll see more information on uh, this toolkit and you'll be able to, to access it. We also talk about fact sheets. So um, here we have three factions that we will prepare this year. We already, and this is the latest news that uh, I was uh, telling you about, so it's really good that uh, this is a really hot topic, that uh, today we also published the financial support to apprenticeships uh, fact sheet. So I encourage all of you to check the website afterwards and to also check this, uh, this fact, uh, fact sheet. You can also see here a picture, like a sneak preview, let's say, of the, the pages. And here in this uh, fact sheet, we focused on, on the context about the, the financial support for apprenticeships. And then we went into more concrete examples for different countries um, from Austria, from Denmark, Sweden, uh, Croatia, if I didn't mention it before, and also financial support from EU funding. And here you'll again see examples from um, ESF uh, plus, uh, you'll also see examples from Erasmus plus and also RRF funds. Um, moving on to the other one, the fact sheet on Erasmus Plus, we are uh, now working on this, so you'll expect more information later on on this and also towards the end of the year, a uh, fact sheet on micro credentials. Um, so a lot of uh, knowledge sharing activities, I would say, within uh, the Alliance. Moving to the network uh, networking opportunities, uh, sometimes uh, maybe people prefer these ones because you go to different gatherings either online or in person and you have the opportunity to also meet with the other members or also other members from outside. Uh, here we have the AFA LinkedIn group. Um, if you are not already a member, you can uh, check it on LinkedIn, uh, join the, the group, and then you will be able to see different opportunities that will appear in the next future. Uh, and also, there are also people who uh, share different uh, events that they are organizing or even res important resources that they found. Uh, I think now that the group has uh, almost, let's say, 3,300 members, so quite a big community, I would say. Uh, so if you want to join this uh, big community and um, be together with us uh, on fostering uh, better apprenticeships. 
then we moving on to the high level events and uh, get together events. Um, last week, maybe some of us, uh, you were with us at these uh, events. If not, uh, you will uh, have the chance to be in the future if you join the Alliance. Um, for example, last week we celebrated AFA's achievements over the past decade, and we also discussed uh, the benefits, challenges, uh, future of apprenticeships in Europe. We also had different panels uh, and with the different speakers uh, from also the member, uh, the, the AFA. So, for example, if you are a member of AFA, you can also uh, be in the spotlight uh, during some of these events, talking about maybe your projects or the good work that you, you do uh, for apprenticeships. Uh, and within these panels, we talked about uh, quality apprenticeships, adult apprenticeships, sustainability, and also relevant apprenticeships for, for jobs. Um, then, Another uh, good opportunity here are the uh, webinars and info sessions. Uh, congrats, you are already in one of the info sessions that we are organizing. Uh, but for example, we also organized earlier this year uh, a webinar on um, apprenticeships in the care sector and social economy. So again, there we had some experts who talked about the, the topic and then some panelists who gave uh, good examples. So this is also a good opportunity just to, to learn about good examples that are happy, happening around Europe and also to take note and also to, to make some uh, networking in case you want to collaborate with these partners. And also uh, this one will be in the near future, the AFA ETF regional seminar with candidate countries and the AFA partner countries, which will be in October in 2023. But I think my colleague Luca, my colleague Luca will uh, tell you more about uh, this event later on. Moving to the next one about the AFA community, Maybe you can, uh, now you have the question, okay, but what is uh, this uh, community? Well, an AFA community is basically a group of AFA members who share a common interest, of course, in a topic and who come together to fulfill both in the individual but also group goals. Uh, and here you can see that there will be four communities. This is a new, um, uh, let's say, activity that we created. And the communities are on different topics, social inclusion and gender equality, uh, community on green and digital transitions, uh, uh, learning mobility of apprentices, and also, as I said before, when I presented the priority, uh, also community on role of cities and regions in fostering apprenticeships. And if I go further with this, uh, I will uh, like to give the floor to my colleague Luca. Uh, and again, if you have uh, other um, uh, questions, uh, you can put them in chat or uh, yeah, ask them in, in the end. So Luca, back to you. Thank you, Larissa, and uh, good morning, everyone, also from my side. Uh, so yes, just to cover, I'll give you a bit of uh, overview and give you an impression to um, to see how much uh, the AFA is doing and implementing now that Larissa showed you what other type of activities we are doing, just to give you an idea of the calendar and how busy it gets with the AFA. So, um, let me just move to the next slide. So this is the calendar of activities for 2023. Um, uh, as a bit of background, the AFA every year publishes an action plan in which set out the, the objectives and the goals for the year for the network and uh, consequentially the type of activities and topics it would like to focus on. And these activities and topics are of course decided um, based on consultation with the AFA members. So AFA members have a say on what the AFA should uh, be talking about, talking about and focus on but also, of course, in line with um, the European Union priorities, uh, upcoming policy um, policy uh, documents or policy initiatives from the European Commission and so on. Um, this is the calendar for 2023. And as you can see, as uh, also Risa mentioned, we have uh, two webinars planned. One was done in May and all our webinars are recorded and available online. So if you go to the AFA website and uh, on the Knowledge Hub, you can access all the webinars that has been done over the year. There are more than 30 between the webinars and live discussions implemented over the past years. And the next webinar will be in November, where we have uh, apprenticeships and green, the green transition, and in particular, the focus on the renovation wave, which so is going to be interesting. We will bring a sectoral stakeholder in the webinar, and we will focus really on uh, ex existing practices and what this means indeed for the construction sector. Then we have um, in June, as Larissa was mentioned, we just had this big event, the A-Level event to celebrate the 10 years of the AFA. 
and uh, the get together event, which is really opportunities for the member to come together and talk about topics they really care about. The presentation are delivered by the members. There are workshops and uh, networking opportunities. Then also uh, at all in-person events, new members, there is a special moment for all the new members, the signing ceremony. Uh, where uh, members that just uh, have just done a pledge will be invited on the stage to sign and um, I, and then there will be someone from the commission normally receiving them. In this case was uh, Manuela, Manuela Geleng, um, uh, the, um, uh, which is the, uh, from Digital Employment. And uh, the next event is going to be in October, as was Larissa was mentioning, and is the regional seminar, which is co-organized between the AFA and the European Training Foundation. Uh, and this focuses on the works and the reforms on apprenticeships, apprenticeships that are done in candidate countries. And this will be in Turin on the 11th and 12th of October. So if you join before then, it will be our pleasure to invite you to this event and uh, join and sign um, the, your pledge at the time. Then uh, we had just published today, as Larissa was mentioning, the fact sheet on financing models for apprenticeship. So please go on the AFA website to see this new brand new uh, fact sheet, which is also a new activity that was introduced this year. And of course, the AFA info session. Then we will have a little break for the summer and we will start again in September with a new fact sheet on apprenticeships in Erasmus Plus projects and uh, of course the event in October and a toolkit. The toolkit also is a new activity uh, implemented as of this year and will be focusing on apprentice mobility. So we will uh, provide uh, the toolkit will encompass good practices, uh, checklist um, uh, for organizing mobility uh, mobility opportunities, and will focus on different types of stakeholders. So either you're a company or you're a vet provider, or even if you're an apprentice, you will find something which can be relevant for you. And then, uh, as said, there is the webinar in November, and finally we close the year with a, a fact sheet on micro, micro credential in apprenticeships. Uh, as said, the calendar of activity is set uh, every year for the year after. So toward the end of the year, the AFA will publish the new one and members will be consulted in advance on uh, to the yearly survey that is conducted every year um, around September. And we will ask the members what are the topics they're interested in. So if you join the Alpha, to also have your say on what the Alpha should say next year. Now I would like to give the floor to our uh, guest speaker, uh, Vasi. Please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Luca and uh, Larissa and Anna. It was so nice to see you last week when we celebrate our pledge into the EAFA network. And uh, we consider this opportunity inside of our project and we called Let's Knit Together. And thanks to Anna that she mentioned that uh, it's really a need to support youngsters on, on, on the employment. And apprenticeship, it's really a model that uh, demonstrates that it's possible. Uh, NEET, not an employment education or training for those which are not familiar with these terms. It is a big problem in Romania. I'm coming from Romania and last year we just jumped on the first place uh, for the, the number of needs that are not on the jobs. Uh, let's knit together. It was an opportunity to create synergies between apprenticeship promoters. So we've been so happy that our pledge was approved by EAFA and we have the honor to participate on one of these high level event that also Larissa mentioned, but you look out your enthusiasm already said that it's a, it's a unique opportunity, I can say, to meet various uh, partners from uh, uh, many countries, 36, a lot of countries, uh, Larissa mentioned, and from different institutions, which is very important to have the opportunity to meet um, the, the um, NGOs, vet providers, but also university, public institutions, and small and medium enterprises. On the pictures, I have a very nice picture here with Anna, and of course with Larissa. I didn't know Larissa will be on the, this group, but it's so nice that I uh, choose the, 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 the photos and also with a representative from Pact for Skills, Diana Spiridon, which she really support us on uh, creating the very uh, qualitative pledge, I can say. Uh, if we move to the next slide, 
uh, I will, I'm able to move along. Uh, you're muted. Wait, wait, because you're muted and we cannot hear you. Why Iafa? Why Bukovina Institute from Suchava, which are very far away from the north part of Romania, near to the border with Ukraine? And for, unfortunately, these days we have a lot of youngsters coming from refugees. But uh, why Iafa? Because we want to have direct talking with DG employment, and it is possible. Joining EAFA, it's possible to have a great chance to communicate and validate your apprenticeship model with DG employment in order to find support. Another reason is connecting with new partners. I already mentioned that it was an excellent place to find good, serious, and variety of partners for your future projects. Sharing your best practices across Europe, you can share your own model and find new suitable ones within the AFA network. And not in the end, participating to promote active measures. This is my dream, I can say, and not only my dream, my Bukovina Institute dream is to influence somehow through uh, being part of these alliances, uh, our national and regional levels in order to support more uh, apprenticeship model as a measure on employment for vulnerable groups. If we go to the next uh, uh, slide, I would like to mention a little bit about Pack for Skills membership. Uh, from uh, two years ago, we are part of this and uh, we're acting at your regional level, connecting or creating consortium for skills at your regional level. It will give the chance to work with public institution, private sector and vet providers for common goals. Connecting with new learning regions and is talking more and more about uh, lear uh, learning regions. And I think it, it's the moment when we have to define what is our learning regions and our area. Building your local resources inside of a Pact for Skills consortium, you can build models that support employment at local level. Talking about Bukovina, I always was thinking about Horeca sector because Bukovina is a very touristic place, textile, milk production and others. But these are more linked with our uh, cap capacity, let's say. Uh, participating to skills initiatives, part for skills is part of DG employment and connect with the AFA, ensuring direct communication with EU decision makers. Uh, I think I, uh, I wrote also some expectations. Of course, we are members, but we do have some expectation. Firstly, we want an impact at national and regional level. I have to admit that last week, participating in Brussels, part of the information that I get sounds a little bit science fiction for my region. Why? Because mostly suitable models are on the west part, not on the east part like Romania. In Romania, we still have to fight that apprenticeship learning are recognized. We cannot expect that our regions are paid for apprenticeship stages. All the models that we implement so far since Bukovina Institute is activating in the region since 2005, all of them it were financed by SAF and by uh, other funds that we apply for it not at local level or regional level. And I think uh, we need a little bit more impact. And I was thinking how, because it's easy as a member to request, but we should come with the solutions. And I, and I, I observe that uh, EAFA has this uh, open doors for new initiatives. And I thought, I thought maybe it will be good to have an European action plan for apprenticeship. I had this model from the social enterprise and start working. I have this model for another uh, another topics that we activating and it's work when we have a clear structure and we give to national representatives responsibilities. We need measures for needs. We need measures for adults, flexible programs, validation of competencies, crafts and rural development. It seems to be one of the key element for the future. We are talking about the CDGs, and I think we should look for our resources on the area in order to implement uh, the learning and, uh, and uh, also to open the learning to all to be accessible. 
and of course, structural resources, accessible methodologies and apprenticeship programs, access to a dedicated budget. I put it in red because I know this is a very sensitive <laughs> request, but I think uh, somehow uh, through the structural funds, the apprenticeship should be a priority. Uh, promoting European standards for occupation. I, I want to say that from my area, from my side in Romania, we still are digging and fighting a lot to have defined the occupational standards for some qualifications, which uh, at this stage put us in a very uh, unpleasant uh, situation uh, uh, that we cannot apply uh, the, some occupational standards. And I think if it were at national at the European level, somehow common, it was much easy to define common curriculum and training program and also the validation of competencies. And yes, I think uh, our regions should be aware about this opportunity and to co-finance some uh, European programs that if will be designed. Uh, next. Okay, okay. Uh, this is uh, a little short about our pledge. It's uh, about a project called CEPAL, Supporting Employment Platform to Apprenticeship Learning. This project, it was financed by Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway grants uh, to the Grant Fund for Youth Employment. And we are implement implementing in five countries. So Romania by Bukovina Institute, which are lead partner. But uh, if we go to the next slide, please. Uh, I have a map there. Yes, here it is. So we have Romania uh, with the lead partner Bukovina Institute. We have Bereklosa from Spain, uh, Gisp from Lithuania, Kispe de Adromes from Greece, and Comes from Poland. Uh, the project has two periods. Why? Because we apply firstly for three years of the of the of a project, 1.4 million euro to pilot to define and pilot one model that is suitable to our uh, vulnerable groups, but also then we get an extension being considered a best practice. So we get another money and another two years, which is very happy for us because on this uh, year, 2023, the year of skills and competences, we really can celebrate the successful of our model. Can we go to the next slide, please? We didn't invent the wheel, we always says. The model exists. What we try to do is try to adapt the model of apprenticeship to our youngsters with age between 18 and 29 years, coming from very vulnerable groups, those which are mostly not really easy to employ, youngsters with mental or physical disability, Roma, migrants, drop out of school, low skills, long term unemployment, and other categories. We try to pilot this four months apprenticeship with a model validated already called work integration social enterprise. If we go to the next slide, very briefly, the main objectives, it was to upskill wise experts in order to professionalize the work based on our wise support. Some of our partners already get accredited as a Bukovina Institute, we get accredited as, as a support services for employment according with Romania legislation. Uh, we try to offer, and it's needed to offer tailored support services for employment for 600 needs. So we had about five years and it we had enough time to, to to contribute for support employment of these youngsters. And we succeed mostly on the health sector, crafts and small entrepreneurship. The, the, the secret, it was the coaching and mentoring programs that we develop. We did a lot of training also for needs because not, of, not all of them uh, had ICT skills, for example, or entrepreneurial uh, competences. And of course, we had a massive exchange of best practices among to our partners, but also with other countries that was financed by the youth employment program. I think at that time in 2018, 15 countries from EU were eligible for, for to apply for this grant. And it was uh, more than 600 applications and 25 projects succeed. 
with 20 of them, we really did a, a sharing of best practices. If we go to the next slide. Yeah, the model it's around. So we start with initial evaluation and diagnose with the needs. Then we place them on apprenticeship on the job training within social enterprises, but not only. Then we we did this internship coaching and mentoring on the job with the regular firms, job mediation, and of course, evaluation of competencies. I want to notice here that we have a big number of needs with the age 24, 29. Mostly of them has a previous experience, but never has the chance to be validated their competencies. Maybe they got these competencies on the black market. It's not our fault. We should be able with our flexible model to validate their competences on practical stage. And the last slide, I think. Ah, no, it's not the last, it's the one before the last. We organized during our, uh, of course, this was the request when the pandemic came that we develop 10 webinars uh, that we called Let's Knit Together. We just meet together with need, we put together and we try to uh, develop an online event to share innovative approach on supporting the inclusion of needs on the labor market. So as I mentioned, we have more than 25 projects presented, 20 European countries, more than 500 participants in total and 50 European organizations and institutions as a, as a participants. On the left side, you can see some of our posters that we created during the, our 10 webinars. And the last one, which it's our contacts for anyone which is interested to get in touch with us. We are also on LinkedIn and we are so happy to be part of the family of FIAFA. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vasi, the, for the great presentation. It was great to hear about the project and of course also the uh, uh, why you joined the AFA and I think it was very inspirational and I'm um, looking forward also to maybe see one of your pre the presentation on the project next year when it's finished. Uh, maybe it will be renovated again. Uh, so maybe at the next get together event and of course uh, probably I will see you also the one of the AFA communities, maybe the one on social inclusion that of course it probably it will be very interesting for you. So thanks again for your presentation and uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that it was very interesting for all, all our attendees. Uh, so now that you heard about what the AFA is, you heard uh, what the AFA does, the activities implemented, what are the, impl the, the activities that will be implemented, and you heard from Vasi what, what is the, the AFA can, can, can do for members, what the members can do for the AFA as well. Uh, let's see now how to join um, the, the network and the alliance. It's very, very easy. It's a very simple process, as uh, probably Vasi can confirm. Um, so you just go to the AFA website and there is a link that you can see here on the web page, on the home page actually of the AFA website, where there is join the alliance. And here there is a link to an application form that you can um, you can fill in. And basically once it's submitted, will be received from our side. We will check it and get back to you with either suggestions for um, to just tailor a bit and fine tune the, the pledge, or either it will be just accepted and then you will become a full fledged member of the EAFA. I would just like to show you in a few seconds uh, how does it look. Uh, so I'll just bring here the website. Hopefully you can see it. Yes, perfect. So this is the AFA website. So scrolling down, you can also see the activity plan, just as a small reminder of the calendar before. If you click here, you will see the action plan and the activities plan for the year. And then you end up on Join the Alliance. Clicking on the on Pledge Application Form, you will go on the EAFA uh, application form indeed, and selecting Join the European Alliance for Apprenticeships uh, and Make a Pledge. You will be guided through the wall form and the form will be tailored as the, depending on the choices you make. So it will be very relevant to your organization and to your pledge. And you can decide, you can say, you can decide to do a pledge by yourself, or maybe you will do a pledge jointly with another organization. This is also possible. And then you will be requested to indicate, provide some information for over your organization, which are very useful for networking purposes, for example, or when we're um, organizing an event, we look for a specific uh, stakeholder 
stakeholder, for example, from a specific sector or a specific country, then we may even reach out to you and ask you if you want to present on a specific topic. Uh, then, of course, contact information that are essential for us to get in touch with you and keep you updated on all the activities of the Alpha. And then there is the core of the pledge, which is basically what you are pledging. What are your objectives? So here we ask you a little uh, explanation of what is your motivation to join the AFA and then to define the objectives. As Larissa was mentioning at the beginning, the AFA, there are four core objectives, which is increase the supply, improve the quality of apprenticeships, uh, enhance the image of apprenticeships, or promote the European mobility of apprentices. Then there is, of course, uh, given the importance of the twin transition. So you can also do a pledge to support the twin and grid transition. And if you are unsure of what is your objective, you can select I'm unsure and we will be then in touch to help you define what is the objective that best suits you. Uh, finally, you just click uh, authorization for the, on the GDPR and other few things, and then you can, uh, you're good to go. And there is a one final form, which is indeed to join the, um, the, the, sorry, the Kudirafa communities that are being created. So that is uh, privacy and consent, and that's all. So as you can see, it's quite quick. Um, the, the pledge is quite uh, tailored. And if you, for example, select uh, an objectives as um, uh, supply, then you will have a specific page for the supply, which allows you to indicate, for example, if you have a KPI target, creating a certain number of apprenticeships, the target group, and so on. So uh, this is it. As you can see, it's quite straightforward, and we are here to help you. So just bringing back the presentation. If you have any doubts, you can always contact us at the AFA members at ecoris.com, and we will be in touch and provide you with all the support that is needed. So now it's time for questions and so if you have anything you would like to ask uh, or if you have any um, any suggestions or anything that you would like to be clarified please now is the moment to to jump in and i give back the floor i think uh, i mean anna uh, and larissa as well of course if you also have a question for our uh, fantastic guest speaker vasi so you can also ask him feel free to Yes, thank you very much, Luca. So in the chat, I don't see questions so far. Uh, and then uh, let's see if, if you want to ask for the floor, colleagues or party, dear participants, you can do so. We have a few minutes to reply to any uh, further clarifications that you would need. In, on my side, I was noting that uh, all the information, so I would like to first thank all the colleagues uh, that have spoken because I think it was uh, very, very clear uh, information and it would seem so also from the side of the participants because I don't see, but correct me if I'm not, if I'm wrong, I don't see any further questions. Um, on my side, I was noting indeed with a lot of interest what uh, Petro was saying about uh, one element of joining the Alliance for Apprenticeships is also that it increased, of course, it increased your visibility, but also your empowerment at uh, national, regional or local level, because by being a member of the AFA, you can go to the authorities or to the stakeholders in your country that are the country that are dealing with apprenticeships and say, look, I am a member of the alliance. I also want to be uh, involved in the discussions and maybe I have ideas or I can provide some examples. So this is also one element that is important to consider. And I really hope that you can, uh, after this uh, information that we have shared with you, you can uh, consider joining the Alliance. I see there is a question from Ines. Please, Ines, if you want to unmute yourself and ask. Yes, hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear and see me clearly. I'm uh, good. 
I'm representing uh, Turismo de Portugal, which is the national uh, tourism authority uh, of, of Portugal. And we've just joined the alliance uh, last week. Actually, I was in the uh, at the event and uh, receiving the the certificate and and uh, and uh, and attending uh, part of of the event myself. Um, as we said in our our pledges, I mean, tourism is a very important sector for the, for the Portuguese economy, and we do have a, a political priority, which was set by our government this year to um, increase uh, the the quality of apprenticeships and of job quality in in the sector. So this this is one of, of our goals to inc increase the quality in particular of our apprenticeships. And uh, we also joined this alliance uh, to try to foster the mobility of, of apprenticeships uh, in, in this sector. So tourism, travel, hospitality throughout the EU. So I, I'm, we are fairly new to it, but uh, I would like to present myself and also to ask uh, how could we get in touch or if you could also facilitate maybe a further meeting with the members which are more or less related to the sector so that we could see what partnerships or synergies um, we can find. Thank you so much and, and very happy to be part of this alliance. Thank you very much, Ines, and indeed very welcome uh, to you also in the European Alliance for Apprenticeship. Indeed, also like uh, Petro, you are a new Tourism Portugal is a new member of the alliance. Uh, from my side, to reply to your questions, seeing the objectives that you have highlighted and the reasons for joining the Alliance for Apprenticeships, I would say that one important step to start with would would be to join the community, the online community on mobility of apprentices, because as you said, that that is one of the objectives in this new community that will start. It is a subgroup of the of all of the members of the Alliance, and it will start soon after the summer. During the summer, we will collect um, uh, let's say the interest for the memberships and we will develop uh, more in depth the concept and the topics on which this uh, community will work on. But I would say that, for example, for the second of the topics that you have highlighted, it would be very, very useful to join this community because we will work uh, very much with this group on the specificities of uh, um, increasing mobility of apprentices, mobility of vet learners in general, but uh, in particular for apprentices. And we will also have, as Luca has mentioned in the activities plan for the 2023 year, we will have some initiatives uh, in October and November, in particular a tool, an online toolkit uh, that will provide information about uh, the mobility of apprentices, how to find find information, how to uh, be aware of funding opportunities, etc. And this toolkit will also be accompanied by a webinar afterwards. So it will be very interesting things that will happen in particular for that topic. On the other objective that you have mentioned about the quality of apprenticeships, this is really at the core of the all of the EAFA. So probably in the next meetings, like the one in person in Torino, but also on the exchanges that we will have in the LinkedIn group and the materials that we will develop on the in the Knowledge Hub and in the future in 2024 as well quality will be an essential element because as we said last week in the high level event that we organized to celebrate the 10 years of apprentice of the alliance uh, quality is very very important because it is the basis if you want to increase the attractiveness of uh, apprenticeships you need to communicate more about the benefits but also you have to have on the table a very much quality qualitative offer for young people and adults so that it uh, uh, creates for them the concrete uh, opportunities to then a smooth transition into the labor market 
I hope that it has given you some ideas, but uh, Luca or uh, Larissa or even Petro, if you want to uh, share also some suggestions, please go ahead. Uh, I think you said already uh, all the right things and uh, very, very complete answer. And just to add maybe, uh, of course, also another um, useful tool that the AFAS has is, um, uh, set up for its members is the LinkedIn group, where you can also connect with other members and other stakeholders that are interested in apprenticeship. So, for example, if you look for specific uh, partners and so on, that could be a very nice instrument to find organizations that are relevant, uh, that could be relevant for you. And uh, um, also, of course, on the FO website, you have the list of all the members, so you can filter also by uh, by type of stakeholders and by country. So you can see if you can find uh, the, 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 those are useful tools to find um, partners. Uh, and in terms of quality, just to add um, to what Anna mentioned, of course, um, the Alpha has been working now is, uh, the, with the apprenticeship support services for almost for more than four years, actually, in which we have uh, been producing a lot of material that has been uh, focusing on quality and how apprenticeships can be improved and what are the key elements that need to be uh, to consider and how to do that, sharing the good practices and so on. So if you go on the Alpha website, you can find a bigger repository on, of uh, tools and uh, material that can be hopefully useful. Anna, I see there is also one uh, question in the chat. Maybe you want to take this. If the program has advanced development to accommodate other youth outside EU member countries. So the alliance is not only for EU member states, is also for other partner countries. We also work indeed with the partner countries of the European Training Foundation. So for the moment, as also I think Larissa has explained, we also have candidate countries, EAFA EEA countries, members of the, of the European Alliance for Apprenticeships, and we have Georgia and Israel. So it is opening up uh, in a broader way, but of course this is slowly by slowly, as the one extra country is interested in the European Alliance for Apprenticeships, then also the organizations in these countries are invited to join the alliance and benefit of the opportunities. I'm not sure if there are other questions. Otherwise, maybe before I give the floor to Luca for closing the event, I would like just to say that uh, uh, to the registered participants, we receive the slides and an email with the recording of the session and the recording will be available also in the future for other organizations that would be interested to know all about the benefits uh, of the European Alliance for Apprenticeships. And by this, I give the floor to Luca. Thank you very much and thank you to everybody and to the speakers for their insights. Thank you, Anna. And uh, just to uh, close the event, thanking everyone that attended. Thank you for um, to you and Larisa for, for being here, to Vasi, of course, for joining, and uh, uh, also the other new members, uh, Ines in particular, that also took the floor. So it was nice seeing you here again after seeing you at the, mem at the, at the meeting the other day, at the event. Um, and uh, we hope to re, uh, be reached out by many of you through the form or directly by email. And of course, uh, we uh, are your uh, disposal in case of any questions. And I see in uh, also Imogen would like to say something and I take the opportunity also to, to thank her, of course, for organizing and arranging the, the info session, which was very, very useful and a very good moment for reaching out to new potential members. Yeah, just quickly before everyone goes, um, Sorry that the, the results were not visible, but I can share them now on my screen so we can see how people voted. That's fantastic. So yeah, good. Um, can everyone see? Yeah, good, uh, nice uh, response rate here. Lots of different nationalities. <laughs> um, we've got the different organizations as well. Um, again, big variety of people here. So thank you again for attending. And 44% um, of you said that you are not a member of EAFA, 
which is a good news. The whole point of this info session was to explain what IAFA does and give you more information. Um, what are the main opportunities and benefits that you see? That's very interesting for us to know as well. Mobility, peer organizations, apprentice enterprise experiences. And finally, what is your interest in IAFA? Um, or to maybe to participate, best practices, mobility again, and learn more about the program. So thank you for voting. Um, it's very useful to have this, this knowledge and to understand how we can potentially support you. Thank you, Imogen. And indeed, re 